Hello and welcome to another Intro to Programming tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be exploring the concepts of data types and variables. And we're also going to be touching base on constants. This is your Professor Saad Yusuf and we're going to be go over, going over these concepts. So, let's start. First of all we need to understand why exactly do we need data types. That's an extremely important concept. A lot of the people usually wonder what is a data type and why do we need one. Literally what it means is by the data type we mean the type of data or the type of value that you would like to store in the computer. So you need to tell the computer that's basically why we need data types how much memory to allocate or assign so that we can store the right amount of data. We do not want to allocate too much memory. We do not want to allocate too less of a memory. We just need to allocate right amount of memory so that we can temporarily hold the value. And anything and everything that you see on your screen when you're playing games, when you're typing your uh, Word document, when you're viewing your email, or if you're viewing this presentation, all of this is being kept in the memory. So as a programmer, I need to allocate some amount of memory uh, which will going to hold all this temporary data for me. And in order to tell the computer how much memory to allocate, we need to be using data types. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is what is a variable. By, by definition, in mathematics, variable pretty much means anything that changes is called a variable. But what we're going to be talking about in terms of computer science it is basically a memory space where we keep a value, remember we talked about data type, which tells the computer how much memory I need. But it is the variable that actually holds the value that goes in that memory space. So how much memory to allocate is basically data type's job. And what is variable's job? the actual value that will going to be kept in that memory space. So that is why they both are required for you in order to hold a value in the computer. On the other hand we have a constant which is exactly like a variable. The only difference is the value once assigned to the constant will not going to change during the program execution. So for example if you're calculating sales tax amount, sales tax amount is completely dependent on the subtotal or the amount that you have basically purchased. This is before the taxes are calculated. So sales amount is based on your subtotal. So it will going to vary by your subtotal. But sales tax rate will going to remain constant until and unless a legislature passes through your county or through your city and the sales tax rate changes. Until unless that happens, we will going to basically be holding the same kind of value right within the constant. Now let's move on to the next one. We're going to be looking at why do we need variables or constants. These are programmer defined values which are needed by the program to complete its task. For example, every computer is dependent on three possible tasks input, process, and output. Or in general a computer is called an IPO device. Input pretty much means the values come in from outside by the user. Process pretty much includes the values that are needed by the computer while things are getting processed. And output is something that the computer gives you back. So in order to perform these IPO operations computer constantly need to store values. For example, if you would like to calculate an average of, let's say, three numbers, so you will going to be entering three numbers into the computer, which will going to be considered your input. So what computer will going to do is we're going to take this input, we're going to first calculate the sum of this input, which is the process. We're then going to divide the sum by three to calculate the average. And if the computer needs to tell you both the sum and the average, or just the average, either of the two cases, the output comes out to be that, either average or average and sum. So input is something that comes from user, process is something that your computer does internally to produce the output. Everything that gets, that gets processed does not comes out in the output. And in order to perform these computer operations, computer constantly need to store values either in variables or constants. Similarly, when you design your um, Visual Basic form controls, 
you have these text boxes which hold values. So they are also memory spaces, not variables, but they're actually called objects. Objects are like variables, but they're also used to store values. When I'm saying like variables, that means at this point you're not ready to understand the objects completely, so we're going to assume that they're like variables that hold values. But there's a lot more to objects, which we're going to talk about later in the course. So basically, if you look at this example here, to the programmer, this is a memory location. In this memory location, the programmer knows this memory location, which holds the value $300,000, called EMP sales. But to the underlying computer, the same memory is X0074. And let's look at another variable over here called EMPF name, which holds the value David, but to the underlying computer, this memory location is not EMPF name. It's X0012. So computers refer to memory in a different way than we as programmers do. To us as programmers, each memory is identified by a name if you want to use that memory in your program. But to the underlying computer, it's just a bunch of number. But either way, that memory holds a value. And that value can be pulled out by the programmer by name and by the underlying computer by some kind of a memory number. So here we have three memory locations. One holds the employee sales, one holds the employee's first name, and one holds the employee ID. We have another fourth variable called EMP commission, which at this point is empty. So let's say the programmer decides to write a statement like this, that I want to calculate the employee commission, which will going to be ten percent off whatever the sales amount is. So if I take the ten percent of three hundred thousand dollars, they're going to come out to thirty thousand dollars. So if this ex statement executes, the employee commission will be thirty thousand dollars. Now let's say if the programmer goes back and say, "Oh my God, thirty thousand is way too high. I think I made a mistake. I think it was one percent." one percent of the overall sales should be the employees commission so the moment he writes that instructions and executes it the same variable will not going to hold a value three thousand so that's what variable is whenever you run something against a variable whatever value is being held changes by what the instruction is now let's look at how do we declare a variable? Now we're going to be looking at both variations, how we do it in pseudocode and how we do, do it in Visual Basic. So when you talk about pseudocode, all statements in pseudocode must start with an action verb. So here we have two examples. We start with an action verb declare, like for output we use output or display, for input we'll use input or read. Similarly for assigning a value to a variable we will going to be using set. Similarly to declare a variable we use declare, followed by the data type, followed by the variable name. Similarly we also have one more way of assigning uh, of declaring a variable and that is we still use the word declare data type variable name equals to value if you want to initialize a variable right at the point of declaration you can also do that the reason I use, wrote value in square brackets that means this portion is not required in case of variable if you write the statement above that's more than enough to declare a variable. Second statement is pretty much assigning an initial value while you declare a variable. Now let's come to VB. In VB, instead of the word declare, we use it in a statement, a statement called dim, a command called dim. So dim basically is the declaration of variable statement, followed by the name of the variable, followed by the word as, followed by the data type. Now, the other variation in VB could be dim, variable name equals to some kind of a value as data type. Now this second statement is basically equal to the second statement I wrote in pseudocode. So this is basically the generic overview of what goes in Visual Basic. Now let me take you to a web browser where I can show you how you will gonna go about looking at uh, the examples of how to look for your data types in Visual Basic. So Visual Basic Data Types. So here we are doing a little search here and we're going to be finding this Microsoft website over here. We're going to click on this Microsoft website 
and this is basically uh, the the list of all the data types to be found in Microsoft Visual Studio now this is giving you the Visual Studio 2013 help very similar now this msdn.microsoft.com has been the Microsoft help for years um, I don't even remember like right from the beginning this let me put it this way so here we have a list of data types in Microsoft Visual Basic gives you that you could be utilizing in your program to be used as data types so we have a data type called boolean which could hold a value true or false we hold a data type byte now byte is a type of an integer an integer pretty much is a data type uh, which is used to hold values which are numbers but they cannot be decimal numbers so byte is the smallest representation of integer values ranging from 0 to through 50 to 255 that's a range and we have character which could only hold a single character like a b c plus alphanumeric any kind of symbol we have date and time we have decimal decimal is a huge number as you can see in the scientific notation it's exponent 28 and this is a huge number as you can see over here now decimal data type is 16 bytes long that's huge and then we have double which is 8 bytes long and it's also huge it's ex its scientific notation of exponent 308 that's huge number now followed by integer now integer has a lot of variations one of the variations of integer is int 32 now int 32 bit pretty much means 32 bits and since 8 bits make a byte 32 divided by 8 equals 4 bytes this could easily hold a number from the range of negative 2.1 billion approximately to a positive 2.1 billion approximately sign numbers then we have long long is 64 bits which is 8 bytes it can hold this long number it's a huge number it is exponent in scientific notation 9.8 exponent 18 now let's come down to short short is a variation of int it is two byte long so based on how much space you need to allocate if you're using let's say if you want to store a number of hundred thousand hundred thousand is outside of the range of short so you're going to fall at end if you want to let's just store four billion four billion is outside of the range of end so you're going to use long so based on your need you're going to be picking different data types and then we'll look at double over here which was eight bytes we have single which is four bytes it's exactly like double the main difference is it is store, used to store values in a much smaller range double and single are both used to store decimal numbers then we have string which is used to hold collection of characters now we have integer we have long we have short they're all signed numbers what does that mean they can be used to store both negative and positive numbers but if you only want to store numbers on the positive side and you do not want to be dealing with any negative numbers you can actually double yourself for example if short can hold negative 32,000 to positive 32,000 if you add both of these numbers it is roughly around around 65,000 something so instead of in, in, introducing an integer to store value like 63,000 when you know that all values that you're going to be storing will be zero and above you can rather use an unsigned short which goes up to 65,535 it is same two bytes it just uses whatever negative placeholders were there it also uses them on the positive side so that doubles your capacity that's exactly true for integer that's ex exactly true or long so this is how pretty much you go about declaring variables in VB and these are the data types of course this help is available to you and then each one of these are actually links so if you click on them it'll gonna take you to a little bit more information for example if I want to read a little bit more about integer I'm gonna just click on integer we will gonna load the page about integer we'll talk about integer we'll talk about its ranges and here is an example a great example for you to look at dim k as integer this is exactly how you're going to be declaring a variable if it's a double you'll say dim k as double if it's decimal dim k as decimal now the k is simply the name of the variable there are certain rules and regulations we follow when naming variables for example the names of the variables 
cannot be keywords. That's one of the common things. So these rules apply for variable or constant or even a procedure name. Any kind of a naming or an object, any kind of a naming that you will use in this language will follow this name. That means that the name can not be a keyword or reserved word. What does that mean? That means the name that you're using cannot have a special meaning in the language itself. For example, you have, might have noticed now, as I went through the list of the data types, that we have a data type called integer. We have a data type called care. We have a data type called string. Now these are all considered to be reserved words because these words have special meaning in the language. So you cannot use any of these words to be used as the name of the variable or a constant or a procedure or an object. You cannot use any of these words as user defined words because they are reserved for some special purpose right within the language. So the name of a variable cannot be a keyword or reserve word. Name of a variable cannot have a space. So you cannot have space like if you had it to do employee name as the name of the variable, the writing something like this will consider to be incorrect. EMP name. Now you have two choices for correct. What is the, what are those choices? These are two different industry standards. Some people write like this with an underscore in between every word and some people follow this other convention what we call camel casing. In camel casing if it's one word long all lowercase. If it's multi word long then every other word except for the first word first letter gets capitalized. For example here if I have to employee first name. Now notice EMP is all lowercase it was the first word but second words, first letter is capitalized. Third words, first letter is capitalized. This is called camel casing. You're going to be seeing a lot of it in this class, camel casing. But cannot have a space in the name of the variable. And a variable name cannot start with a number. Similarly, cannot start with a symbol other than an underscore. Underscore is the exception. These are the not rules. And then we have some should rules. These are some industry standards in terms of shoulds. The should says follow camel casing. This is one of the should rule. Another should rule is when you are naming your objects. So follow object prefixes like you might have noticed in some of the tutorials I've recorded for you already and some of the tutorials I'm going to be recording for you later on that all the labels have started with LBL all the text boxes started with TXT all the buttons started with BTN this is just one of another naming convention naming conventions are pretty much standards in industry but the language itself does not force that upon you however you should follow industry standards for the most part to be successful so this is basically a little overview about using variables and constants. So when we declare variables, we declare them with the word dim. When we declare constants, we declare them with the word const, C-O-N-S-T. Other than that, the entire declaration look exactly like it's shown on this slide. Instead of the word dim, you'll use the word const. So const, constant name, as data type. One rule to follow here that all constants must be assigned values right away. You cannot wait later on to assign a value to a constant because that's what a constant is. Once it gets its first value, which must be given at the time of declaration, it lives with that value till the end of the program execution. Now in the next set of tutorials we're going to be doing some examples of first writing a pseudocode and flowchart and then we're going to be converting that pseudocode and flowchart into both a GUI application and a console based application. So you're going to be learning how to take an input into a variable, how to be assigning values to your variables. So it's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming in the next set of tutorials. Hope you would have enjoyed this one. Have a good one. Thank you for watching.